Hi, this is Johns Hopkins, and I am here in the world headquarters of Baltimore Heritage's filming studio uh, here in my living room. Welcome or welcome back. I think today we're going to head over to Druid Hill Park um, and look at two places. And uh, I think we'll pick two places that aren't maybe the most uh, popular or the most well visited. We're not going to talk about the conservatory or the zoo too much, uh, but two that are more off the beaten path. And I will say uh, thanks to some UMBC researchers who helped us do the research on these. We've got a great collaboration on a project we call Explore Baltimore Heritage. Um, that's explore.baltimoreheritage.org, um, where we've got an interactive map online and a free downloadable app for your phone that has about, um, I'd say, 500 or so historic sites across the city with a little bit of research on them and some historic images and contemporary images. Uh, so maybe at the end of this video, we'll put up the website address for that. And if you want to uh, take a look at it on your uh, computer or on your phone, I uh, would encourage you to do so. And hopefully you, you can find some information about places that you are curious about. All right, over to Druid Hill Park. Um, the first thing is, let me ask, uh, how many of you out there have heard of William Wallace? And what is he doing on the edge of the reservoir in Druid Hill Park? Um, I didn't know that until relatively recently, and I bet you if you're scratching your heads and saying, I have no idea who that is, you're not alone. Well, William Wallace was uh, from Scotland. He lived in the late 1200s and early 1300s. Um, that's right. Uh, he was a Scottish nationalist and fought against Edward I, the King of England, um, uh, for independence, for Scottish independence. Um, he had probably the first big victory for Scottish independence in the early 1300s um, at the Battle of Stirling Castle. But his luck didn't last long. In 1305, uh, the English captured him and beheaded him. So William Wallace uh, had a sort of grisly end to him. But his, uh, his deeds and his cause lived on. Um, in fact, lived on many, many hundreds of years. And in the 1880s, uh, a statue of him was uh, put up in Scotland um, on a place called Abbey Craig. And, uh, and that was a, a great thing for the Scottish and for the Scottish nationalists. It was also a great thing for our own William Wallace, a gentleman named William Wallace Spence, who claimed that he was a direct descendant of uh, William Wallace the Scot. Um, and given his name, it sounds like maybe, maybe he actually was. Uh, but our own William Wallace erected a statue of the, the famous Scotsman um, in Druid Hill Park in the 1890s, I believe, say somewhere around 1900. Uh, in commemorating the, the 700 year old uh, uh, efforts of his forefather many times removed. Um, and, but our own William Wallace wanted the statue to be enormous. He wanted it to be gigantic. So he put it on a base 16 feet tall of Maryland granite. And then, uh, and then the statue itself, although the one in Scotland is about life size, the one here is 14 feet tall from Wallace's toe to the top of his sword that he's raising majestically in, his, uh, in the, that defeat over Edward I um, at the Battle of Stirling Castle. Um, every year, beginning in 1905, Baltimore St. Andrew's Society uh, meets at the statue to, on, on the uh, anniversary of Wallace's uh, death. Uh, to commemorate uh, Wallace the Scot, and I guess probably thank Wallace the Baltimorean for putting up the statue there. So that's how we got William Wallace uh, with his sword aloft on the uh, western edge of uh, the lake in Druid Hill Park. Let's move over uh, to the back of the park for our second site, um, and that's near where the Disc Golf Course is, and we're going to take a look at the Buchanan Rogers Cemetery. And, uh, and you may know the Buchanan and Rogers names. Uh, they go way back into the early days of Baltimore. Um, uh, Buchanan, George Buchanan, moved to Baltimore. He emigrated from Scotland uh, in 1723. So, hey, maybe, uh, maybe William Wallace, uh, the Scot from the 1300s, isn't such a crazy thing in Druid Hill Park after all. So our own uh, uh, George Buchanan uh, emigrates here in 1723. In 1729, when Baltimore City is incorporated, he's one of the first commissioners, so he rose to prominence pretty quickly. He also married very well. He married Eleanor Rogers of the Rogers family. And if you've ever been to the Rogers Mansion at the zoo, uh, the place where there are lots of uh, great events, and incidentally, um, where I got married, 
Uh, but the Rogers Mansion is that Rogers family. But George Buchanan marries into the Rogers family, gets 250 acres um, uh, in now what we know as Druid Hill Park. And he names them, and let me pull this out because I want to get the name right, um, either in a whimsy or in uh, maybe he was into his Scottish whiskey cups. But he names his 250 acres um, Hab Nab at a Venture. Uh, and with that, he starts his uh, amassing of an estate. He eventually gets to 625 acres um, and names it after a family estate in Scotland um, that we call Auchentrolly. If, uh, if I had a better Scottish accent, and let me, let me try this, and all you uh, folks from Scotland can laugh at me, I'll give you permission to do that, but um, Buchanan would have called it Auchentrolly or something like that. Um, uh, and that's where we get Auchentrolly Terrace, the neighborhood. So in, uh, uh, Buchanan amasses this estate. In 1750, he dies and passes it on to his family, who holds on to it uh, until 16, um, uh, I'm sorry, until uh, 1860, when they give it over to Baltimore City for the park that we know now as Druid Hill Park. They give it over, though, with one condition, and that's that the family cemetery remain open to all, uh, all the folks who were in there uh, in 1860, but also all of the then living members of the Buchanan and Rogers families. And so in that cemetery, which is still there today, it looks a little forlorn, but still there, um, there's at least one uh, uh, member of the Revolutionary Army who fought with George Washington and bunkered down at Valley Forge with uh, President or then, uh, um, um, then General Washington, uh, and at least one known Confederate spy. So the Buchanan and Rogers families uh, contributed a lot to Baltimore, including Druid Hill Park, uh, but also apparently had a pretty colorful family as well. Uh, I think we'll end it there. Thanks for joining us. And I think maybe uh, we'll come back to Druid Hill Park and go off the beaten path again, because I know of several more places that are worth exploring. Thanks so much.